What's up guys? I'm at this ridiculous $8 million house that comes with this Rolls Royce if it sells. Well, I'm here to try and trade one of my watches for that car. Let's go. Guys, thanks for tuning in. As always, I'm gonna ask you to hit the like button, subscribe if you're not a subscriber to the channel, and at the end of the video, comment below what you thought about the house. What's up, Roman? Holy sh**. You gonna check out this house? Yeah. Let's do it. Wow, this house is bonkers. This house is insane. I can't wait for you to take a look at it. All right, so remember that dumb idea that I had talked to you about? Yeah. So I feel that giving away a Rolls Royce, for many reasons, we'll get into that later, is not as good of an idea as giving away a watch. So what I brought is like equal value watches to that car. Uh -huh. I think what's in here, what's gonna be a much better giveaway with the house than the car. Well, let me see the watch. Let's see the house first. <laughs> first off, we have the family room. This family room is ridiculous. Crisscross ceilings, open, open floor plan, exits to the greenhouse, but you have this Yeah, incredible, what is with that fireplace? Incredible fireplace. It's probably worth about $250,000. $250, it was imported from Italy. And this was handmade? This was handmade at some point, probably 18th century. He had it shipped oh, so it's here actually it. it's an antique one. This is an antique one, yeah. Wow. Well, it doesn't look like he's been sparing expenses around here. Not at all. Not what at else? All. He's gone out, all out for this property. <laughs> you know what? I always wanted a ballroom. Well, you got a ballroom, man. You got a ballroom. I feel like I should have worn a tux. Oh my God. So this is what? This is literally a ballroom. Ballroom for greeting, entertaining. There's a bar over here with your favorite selection. Of tequila? <laughs> Hold that thought, guys. <laughs> Casa Azul and Rox. A little drink? I mean, again, I'm a numbers guy. Like, I'm looking at the floors, the inlays on the floor, and all the finishes on the walls. Just to finish a room like this. Forget even the Murano. That's probably the, a couple hundred grand right there. the flooring, the Murano glass, all these windows, all the trim, all the intricacies here. This room has to be worth around three fifty dollars to $400,000. All in. Plus the liquor. So Plus we're, the liquor. we're at about four ten. dollars Exactly, yes. All right, pour me a shot. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, so Roman, I know you're a big foodie, so you have to check out this kitchen. No expense was spared. You have this huge island. You have all this ample cabinet space. You have a French stove with a five cooktop. This is all you need in a house. What's up with that fireplace? I mean, that's another, looks like a, a mantle that they imported from some. So our fireplace was imported from Turkey. So between the Turkish fireplace here, the Italian fireplace there, and there's another fireplace in the master that I can't wait to show you. Just shits and giggles, ballpark number to build something like a this. A kitchen like this, with the square footage and all the attention to detail, would call be upwards of $400,000. Just the kitchen itself. I think it's more, bro. I think that fireplace is hundred grand alone, but what do I know? This is what you do. I just sell watches. This is the chandelier I was talking about. It's a Maria Teresa chandelier. I'm not sure how many bulbs are here, but from what I understand, after speaking to the seller, it's worth about $260,000. This is absolutely, I, I, you know what, Crystal is uber, uber expensive. And one of the things I'm noticing too is like the railings, you know, the, the finishes, the ceiling, the doors, the doors, this is the master? The doors, this is the master bedroom. The doors, uh, all shipped from Italy. The marble shipped from uh, Turkey. Everything was shipped from overseas. The majority of the, the quality pieces that you're seeing were all shipped from overseas. I mean, whoever built this, like they, it was really like no expense spared. Absolutely not. Well, I want to see what's behind that let's door. Let's go, let's take a look. So the illustrious master bedroom. Check it out. A beautiful exit to your private terrace overlooking the private 10 acre spot. Every bedroom has a terrace and every bedroom is a suite. So you have a full bedroom and a full bathroom and sitting room and terrace. And why is there two doors here? So there's his closet, his bathroom, her closet, her bathroom. Well, I'm, I'm gonna check out hers because I know that's gotta be better than his. Let's take a look. At least that's, it is, that's what it is in my house. Let's take a look. So this is her walk-in closet. Everything was customized from her shoes to the center island here. It's remarkable, high ceilings, Openness, you can showcase all of your jewelry, your I mean, bags. I, got, I, got a, I got a quote on a custom closet one time and it was like in the hundreds of thousands. It's insanely expensive. It's like building a kitchen, basically. This is about 500 square feet. This is bigger than my parents' old condo down the shore. <laughs> the the <laughs> closet here. So it's a, it's a large closet. It's probably costing them anywhere close to eighty to $100,000. Let's look at the bathroom. Let's do the bathroom. This is her master bathroom. And the her master bathroom comes equipped with a stand-up shower, probably for three or four, a beautiful soaking tub. Yeah, I feel like I'm at the Caesar Palace in it Vegas. Is, it is, and you have I mean, a little, uh, that the ceiling, over there the, looks the, like bath, the bathtub looks like it was carved out of a chunk of stone. I would ask you to get in there, but I don't think you'll fit, Joe. But, I will I mean, not fit in there, I don't This think. is just a ridiculous amount of stone and just, wow. Yeah. I mean, this is, I, I literally feel like I'm in the Caesars. Joe, I'll be honest with you, I am uber impressed. This house is ridiculous. Well, wait until you see the ultimate playground.
I mean, I can see this is like a whole other house down here. This whole house is equipped with so many rooms that you're gonna get lost. But I wanna take you through each room one by one. The first room over here is the lower living area, lots of memorabilia. With the right price, he might leave it all for you. Hulk Hogan, Hulk wow. Hogan. Insane. Hulkamania, or Hulkamania, whatever. Hulkamania. Hulkamania. It's a kid's place. This is like the ultimate basement right here. Ultimate basement. Yeah. So no basement is uh, complete without a custom bar. This wood was actually brought in here from England. This was a custom bar in England that he transferred over here and he has this beautiful- I feel like this country. guy just keeps transferring stuff from foreign he countries. He likes things from Europe, as you can I, see. I could tell that the house is in very much that style. I mean, the bar is great. As much as I'd like to have another shot with you, uh, I can't help but to see, but there's a pool in front of us. The indoor pool is pretty ridiculous. I so need to see that. Let's go take a look at that. This is probably my most favorite part of the house. You have an indoor pool, eight person jacuzzi, you have TVs, you have a sauna, you have a steam room. If I was watching the Super Bowl, this is where I'd want to watch it. And you have access to the outside. So this basement, the way the basement is, most basements are underground. This is actually this is above a ground. lower level area. So in the summertime, you have full access, have party, have people coming in and out of the house, and they don't have to step foot into the main part of the house, which is amazing. So after viewing this ridiculous house, we wanted to sit down and discuss taking a watch, trading it for a car, and for Joe to take that watch and use it as a giveaway with the sale of the house. A great marketing stunt for both, really. The idea is actually pretty simple. If you look at a car, a car is usually a depreciating asset, right? right. Like that car retails for, I think, around $500,000 when it originally sold. But, okay. And, uh, you know, today's value, I talked to some of my car guys, and today's value is anywhere from 275, let's say, to 350, depending on condition, options, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. For somebody that's buying a house of this magnitude at this price, a Rolls Royce is not something that's necessarily going to impress him, but a watch could. And these are the kind of watches that are in line with the price of that particular car. So my idea is, like, I like the car. Right. Right? This is a car I'm going to drive and, let's say, use. Okay. Well, at the same token, you've given away a watch with the sale of this house, so at least giving them an option to say you can choose between the car or this particular watch or watches would make it for a better sales pitch. I like where your head's at. I think you like this idea as well. And what I brought was a bunch of watches that could be a, a his and hers, right? Okay. And there's watches here in every single price range. Some are actually more than the car, like this watch is $750,000, uh, where a watch like this is in that two fifty dollars range. So, 250 to 300. So you either go with a single his and hers, where you go with like a 200, $100,000 watch, where you present it that way, or you go with one single f you watch, maybe in a likes of this Audemars, maybe in a likes of this Richard Meal and things of that nature. So. And also it's appreciating. So not only is he getting. See, I don't like to tell people watches are an investment, although over time, over the last few years, we've seen watches appreciate even post the dip that happened in the market with some of the hot well, stuff. Well, it's going to appreciate more so than a Rolls Royce. In the very least, you can say that this will be money in a bank versus a car, a car that's going to depreciate. And right. not everybody wants to get out there and drive the Rolls Royce. I mean, me and you will. It's too flashy. But, <laughs> but yeah. me and you would want to, are going to want to do it. But at the same token, I feel like this is something that you can present to your buyer to get creative because you're one of the most creative people I know in real estate when it comes to marketing real estate. You always do th stuff outside of the box. You always do things differently, uh, which is what makes you the top realtor. What are you, top three in the country now? We're, we're, Remax? We're top five. Top, top five, five in Remax in the country, which Correct. is pretty damn impressive considering there's thousands of realtors out there. The idea popped into my head is why not show this house for one and at the same token see if we can make a deal and I can drive away with a Rolls Royce and you guy can put up a watch. As if the price gift. is right, we might make it happen. Let me have a chat with my client tonight and I'll get back to you maybe tomorrow. Why don't you call him now? Okay. Give him a call, see what he thinks. Let's do it. Let me see what happens. A lot more people will be keen on putting on an expensive watch rather than a particular car. What do you guys think? Okay, so here's a scenario. He's in, uh, there's a couple conditions. I think if he can basically continue to market the house with the Rolls Royce and give somebody the option of a watch that's gonna be in relation to the same value as the Rolls Royce or getting a watch that has the same value as the car. What do you think? I mean, if I had to identify a watch now, so I'm gonna go with a watch that's slightly less of a value than the Rolls Royce. And the reason for that is because if I'm gonna end up holding this watch for the next two, three months, uh -huh. that's money that I'm holding back. So like this watch, this watch sells for around 275,000, which would probably be a wholesale price on that Rolls Royce. Okay. And yes. this is an Audemars Piguet concept, automatic chronograph. And uh, it's the first of its kind, it's a rare watch. They only made 50 of these. Uh, original MSRP on the watch was 365,000. Mm -hmm. Market price on it is around that $300,000 price range. Okay. If I'm gonna hold, like if, if you, and I'm being, transparent with you. If you came to me and like offer me a cash price, it'd be a little bit different. But 
I can't have you market this through your channels. And then when somebody comes to buy the house, says where to watch, and I say I sold it, which means I have to put it away and put it on hold. I think we have the option of the rolls as option B, A for somebody that wants to buy the house for this price point and gets the rolls. And if they don't want the rolls and they want to watch, that's the watch they get. And I can do one better. I can go on record and say, look, you have a $300,000 credit at Luxury Bazaar. Should you not like this or watch you want something else? Let's do it. Done. Well, first of all, Joe, I appreciate you letting me in. This house is absolutely bonkers. Thank you so much for I the mean, opportunity. I really appreciate it. I mean, it. this is awesome. And I think this whole dual marketing thing that we're doing, I think is going to benefit both of us if you ask me. I think so too. And I think once I sell this house and you get this car, I'm going to borrow it for about a month or so. Deal? Done. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. The reason I decided to do this with Joe is Joe is a beast in his industry. Uh, and I know that, A, he can sell that house, which is not an easy task in the area that we live. And at the same token, I felt it was mutually beneficial from a marketing perspective. Joe actually just started his YouTube channel. Check him out on YouTube. We'll link it below. Contrary to all beliefs, not all clients are equal. Some are easier and some are harder and some are super hard. Case in point with this particular client, I hope Adrian can make a deal happen because this guy's tough. Sky Dweller. Okay, that one is a 2021 card. 2021, 35.5. Rose Daytona, September 2022, 51. Lefty? Lefty is 2022 for 22,000. You? Yeah. No? That's where you make money. Not all this bullshit. Pepsi Jubilee, stuff that I don't want to sell to you. Here we go. It's not going to be for you. This is 19.5. Mark, it is what you make it, sir. 2018 for 36. That is 17.2 uh, 2020 new style card. This is best and final. This is like, I'm, 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 I'm like legit firm on this. Okay, let's see what the tally is, right? No, no, hold on. Let me, let me bring you in. Get your hand away. No, I'm using my own accounting. <laughs> my own numbers I'm using. I'm so firm, I'm about to impregnate somebody. Like, I'm fing boom. We're 6K apart. How is that far yeah. off? It's a quarter million dollars. Bro, I, this, is, this is my best of final. This is this is final offer, right? 267. It's my, it's my final offer. 269 flat is my final offer. Literally, final, best. I want everybody to understand that when I go into business dealings with him, I do it out of all love and all respect. Because he's difficult to work. He's not difficult. He's smart. He's sharp. He knows what he's doing. And because I like him and he's a friend, I'm willing to put up with his shit. He just went to the bathroom. He's going to come back. He's probably going to do a few circles to get some oxygen in his brain, come back, and we're going to finalize this deal. The watch is in question here. We actually, he's gifting his mother this. We've got a two-tone Sea Dweller 43. We have a Sky Dweller Yellow Gold Champagne. We have a brand new Rose Gold Daytona Black Dial. We have a Stainless Steel Daytona Black Dial. We have a the new Sprite Oyster. We have a two-tone bluesy fully sticker 2023. We have a Pepsi on Jubilee 2023. Mercedes hands yacht master and stainless steel. And last but not least, we have a two-tone Daytona yellow. Yeah. Wait, before you write the check, I say Mazal. Mazal. As you may have guessed, this was a wholesale client, and as I said, a very, very tough one. But guess what? Adrian is tougher. So I had a client come in to purchase the brand new Green Dial 5270 Patek Philippe, as well as an A Lang and Sun Chronograph 1815 um, in rose gold. So hopefully he's gonna like the both. And you said you've seen this in person before? The, yeah, the, the 50. Oh, this one, yeah. yeah. I, I, I had it on my wrist for like Actually, a week already. I have a box for you that I wanted yeah, to yeah. show you. I'm gonna bring it out um, okay. after that. So tell me the story. So this one was uh, out of Patek in November, you told me, mid November. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what happened? Straight from Patek to the to the client? Correct. Which do you know which Patek uh, in the US? Um, I don't know, but I'm sure it says on the papers. And he never wear it. He just uh, no, no. consign it directly to you. Um, I mean, it's you know, there. Um, he has a lot of watches, so sometimes you know he he obviously can't turn this out, mm. down. So. This one is just amazing. Okay, this one is a, it's a done deal. You know, I. I, I, I I was not sure, but after a week on my wrist, I said that. Uh, <laughs> oh, so this one you have never no, seen? No, I've seen it in many, many variations, but never mm -hmm. the, the, the gold uh, black tie. Well, mm -hmm. It's actually um, also, well, it, it actually possibly be here Saturday. I found it amazing, but like the other variation, it seems a bit big, but I don't know, maybe I get used to. Uh, the case size? Yes. I disagree, but <laughs> 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 what, are you, what are you usually wear? Like, 38, like 38. all my FP Jones, they are 38. Mm -hmm. For this type of watch, it's different because you have more complications. Mm -hmm. 
So this, this one is a 39.5, right? Yes. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Thanks again for coming in. I hope you enjoyed the watches. Take yeah, take he's uh, trading this Rolex Pepsi here. Plus the RA Wireless. So 2022. But yeah, if you want to... That should be nice. Try it on, yeah. Yes. Try it on. Like I said, they wear surprisingly light. This. Wow, that is amazing. What drew you to the watch? Just like the colors? Uh, the, the brand, really, I love blue. Blue is my favorite. Mm -hmm. The blue and yellow contrast is absolutely amazing. Okay. It's absolutely amazing, the blue and yellow contrast. So your first AP, huh? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Man, I'm beside myself. Yes, sir. Thanks, the, uh, man. Take a look at the uh, Rolex here. I know this is your first AP, so enjoy it. Wear it in good health. Hopefully one of many more. Bluesy on the wrist. Daddy's home. What are we in a club? <sighs> busy, busy week. Got, I think, eight or nine watches sold this week. These are the last two. This is the final push on Friday to meet our shipping window. So here we have a 5712 going to San Francisco. The man is actually a really nice guy. He's celebrating his birthday. He's actually a house music producer and we we're able to get him in this 5712 honestly i haven't seen one in better condition look at that this is a 2018 model but it looks like you know it's coming straight from the dealer honestly one of my favorite models 5712 with the moon phase and the date honestly really this is going to be a hot hot take hot take i prefer this over the 5711 just because you get a lot more for the watch and it's arguably, I think, just a prettier watch. Because it's not balanced, but there's something in that symmetry, that, in that uh, lack of symmetry that, that really gives the watch character. And then another one, this is a really interesting piece. I've been trying to push this one for a long time, and then a client reached out to me, and it honestly takes all the boxes. He was looking for a Rolex Day-Date in 36 millimeters, his birth year, so 1978. And what's interesting about this is, as you can see, it was made for the South American uh, market. And what's interesting about this is it has the date wheel or day wheel in Spanish. So this is going to a good home in Missouri. So anyway, these are getting quality controlled. They're going to get wrapped up and then we're going to send them off today. Saturday delivery. On to the next one. Okay, so uh, basically my client, uh, you guys might remember from a few episodes ago, I had sourced a Yachtmaster Pave on Oyster Flex for him, for his wife for Christmas. And this Rolex Day-Date, this green ombre, is another gift for her here. So again, this is a return client, just give him a follow-up. He wanted us to take a couple links off. I asked uh, Peter to give us a hand here. He took off a couple links so it'll fit her. And yeah, just about to give him a call for a follow-up. Good, good. How you doing, Scott? Good, man. A little fucking shot from the Super Bowl, but getting through. I hear you. I hear you. Of course, everybody in the office was a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, down about that, but yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, I got your watch here. Uh, the day date look, it looks sick. This thing is definitely unworn. And Peter took off a couple links, like we mentioned. He took off. Uh, I'm counting about one, two, three, four, about eight. Because you said she's got yeah, a skinny wrist, right? As long as it matches the, uh, the other 36 she has. For sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah, we went by the, the Rose 36 that you sent us that she has. So this is, uh, how many watches now is this for her? Oh, uh, dude, I can't keep up. Eight or nine, probably. Eight, eight or nine? That's quite quite a bit. And, and I did throw in the AIF shirt. I got yeah, a lot. Yeah, as you notice, there's a trend. Her nickname's Diamond Diana for a reason. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. I'm sure she'll be happy with this one. Like I said, this one's full set. It comes with the big day date box. And I, this gets me out of the doghouse. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I got you a large uh, long sleeve shirt too. I'll be sure. Oh, you're the man. So, Thank you, buddy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But yeah, I was just calling to follow That's up. It's an expensive t shirt. Yes, sir. I know, right? This is uh, what, what you bought the AP dual time from me, the uh, Yacht Master, and this, right? gonna pump those numbers up there you go there you go let me know next time you're looking for anything certain you know we can always find it always, for you always thank you buddy so yes sir we'll talk to you soon don't work too hard All right, later scott a very kind lady walked in she's local she came to pick up a maurice lacroix for her husband's 40th birthday and let's go see how she likes it all right daria all right <laughs> so here we are 
As you can see, the beautiful Maurice Lacroix with the power reserve. You know, you said it was something similar to what your husband has, and I think this is a nice, nice, very nice gift. <laughs> it's beautiful, and um, I think that's exactly what he, uh, what he wants. Well, that's exactly what I want. <laughs> but yeah, he turns 40, and I think that's going to be very special for him. And thank you, Dave, for all the uh, support. And I mean, I know nothing about watches, but after the conversation with you, it's been <laughs> thank you so an amazing much. experience. So it's a pleasure. You. It's a pleasure really to uh, to share the passion and then most importantly, that this finds a good home and I'm sure he's going to wear it in health and enjoy it. So, so. you guys are going to P Puerto Rico, right? Yes. So, so great. Oh, great. Good thing this water is, <laughs> this watch is water resistant. I but, but I wouldn't, I don't recommend him swimming with it. So yes, it uh, it is water resistant, but still it's nice to take it off. So okay. you have the beautiful box here and uh, we'll get you set up. All right. Sounds good. Thank, thank you so you. much. Daria, thank you so much for coming in and picking up this Maurice Lacroix watch for your husband. Happy birthday, enjoy the watch, and enjoy Puerto Rico. Guys, if you remember a little while ago, I was in Atlanta and I visited Swiss Watch Expo. Well, this is Eugene, he's the owner of Swiss Watch Expo. Yeah. Came to visit us, originally right. Philly guy. Yeah. Go Eagles, obviously. Go Eagles, I'm here, here for my for grandpa's 90th. 90th and I, birthday, And, and I wanted him. to come see the man in person and check out the operation. And I'm gonna pick his brain along with Peter about the best watch service center that I think any great market watch dealer out there has, period, hands down. Yeah, our, our businesses are pretty different. We really specialize in pre-owned pre -owned timepieces where we take a used watch and bring it to as close to new condition as possible. And we do the same exact thing. The only problem is I don't have six talented staff. Is it six but now in your service ten. center? Ten people in the service center. Uh, by the way, last time I was there, I'm like, so you um, we may send you a few things, you can maybe do some service for us. He's like, no. <laughs> and that's the right way to approach it. And again, what we've done, obviously, with the help of Peter, we put together a few things here to at least give us the first line of defense to where the companies that we do work with that charge us an arm and a leg to do this, in the very least, we can call bullshit them and say, hey, listen, this watch doesn't need what you're telling me it needs because we're at the mercy of those that we work with. And oftentimes, you know, we get charge $2,000 for a watch that perhaps didn't need a $2,000 overhaul. So speaking of which, this is Peter. This is, he's actually a buyer and he's actually a sales, he's in sales, he's also a buyer, heavy concentration on Rolex, but he's also a bit of a watchmaker himself. So in the very least, we know that basic things that are wrong with the watch, he can spot them right away and he can fix a lot of, you know, small things. It's just, unfortunately, I need him, his time to sell watches and buy watches rather than fix watches. So maybe one day, maybe one day. For now, we're gonna stick with the centers. I want you to meet my friend. This is Eugene. He's the guy that owns Swiss Eugene. Watch Expo. Nice to How meet you, man. Lovely to meet uh, you, mate. Lovely I've to seen meet your you. videos and content. You're, yeah? Yeah, you're very animated. Appreciate great great to meet you, man. Always, an, always entertaining. You came, well, you, came, you came to support the Eagles and you, you had to be in Philly? Yeah. Was, was that, what, Bowl, was that what, right? what drew you here? Be honest. No, no. no? no. I don't okay. even know about Super Bowl. He you picks know, up I football watch a real state. game, right? Yeah. I watch a real game called football. <laughs> it's called soccer. Called football. No, it's called football. Because we actually use our feet, right? Rather than our hands. So we actually, yeah, that, that's it. What about the goalie? He uses hands. <laughs> it's one guy. Every time a European shows his face here, it's not real football. Our football is real football. In the past few days has been really busy. Um, we were able to get, well, I was able to get four deals done in two days from Rolex Explorer to a 5712 paddock to um, now just closing out a Vampire AP. So it's been super busy, which is good because the moms start off super slow. So yeah, we're rolling. Uh, just sold a 15500 OR, uh, working on selling this <coughs> 5065A. First Patek ever put on a rubber strip. It's at the 36 millimeters. Great watch. We have Nico in here. It's just uh, very loud. Working on some film for Anna right now. Uh, it's my first week here. So I'm just trying to pump out content for everybody and just make sure like we just stay consistent, keep the ball rolling. I'm here to create, just try some new stuff. I'm here to uh, get twice as much done. I don't know what you guys were talking for, but I'm here to double that. <laughs> and uh, just try some cool things, see what works, see what fails, and then just uh, do it again the next day. What's up, guys? What's up? Good. Nick? Nice to meet you. Rylan, nice to meet you as well. Adrian, I need you to meet somebody. But this kid single handedly raised more money than I think we did with watchesforgood.org by riding a bike. Like a BMX bike? <laughs> yeah. I haven't rode a BMX bike. So do you have a BMX bike here? Yeah, not with me. So Cameron yesterday goes, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be cool if you brought his bike and jumped off the second floor? I'm like, no, it would not. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I 
could probably do it, right? Hey guys, I want you to meet Riley. So Riley does BMX racing, and when he does the races, he actually raises money for charity. How much did you raise last year, last time? Last year was around $70,000. He raised 70 grand last year, and this year we're hoping to do more. We're gonna help him, obviously, to raise that money. But the story of this kid is absolutely amazing. And I think he's an aspiring watch collector too, so possibly a future client for all you salespeople. <laughs> So. We were just actually on the phone on the way up here. Uh -huh. We came up with an idea for a YouTube channel for him. Okay. And what the focus of the YouTube channel is going to be if we do it, which I want to do, I just don't know how, so I was going to pick your brain. That's, that's what we have an entire department to help to you with. To start a YouTube channel with him to try to teach other kids how to raise money for charity. The way we did it was, so my guy Nino, when he started watchesforgood.org, is our, our immediate goal was to be able to raise money almost immediately for an immediate cause, right? But what you don't see is you don't see sort of an immediate impact. With you and going with the idea of saying, oh, there's a kid in California that's trying to help an elderly home, for example, he needs to raise 10 grand to, you know, buy UTVs. I'm just making it simple, right? Mm -hmm. That's when you see like an immediate impact, right? You go out, you, you put the word out, you raise the $10,000, a check goes to that elderly home right away, and three days later, there are new TVs. So you go out and buy the TVs. We talked about your Grail watch. What's a Grail car for you? That's hard. It is hard because there's so many. You know, I guess they, think about your, your father's best friend's collection. Which one of those would you take? Easily the number three Le Mans Corvette. Wow. Okay. That's a, that's a really good choice you got there. Here he comes, are you done? Mr. America. Are you guys done? We are done. Yeah. We actually wanted to introduce. Right, so one of the things. I wanted to do for you because what struck what struck me in the most ridiculous way is when your father told the story about you and what you do and what you're actually trying to do. I felt like sports, right? Sports, bike racing. What does it require usually? Uh, knowing how fast you're going and timing yourself and timing laps, right? Yeah. What's what's the one thing that in a watch that times? Laps. Chronograph. Chronograph. So we felt here that if you're going to do these type of things, I felt like you should have your own chronograph to be able to do so. So what we decided is we decided to gift you a Tudor chronograph that you can wear. You can time laps with this. It is a chronograph. This is all yours to keep. You're familiar with Tudor. It's the other brand that Rolex makes. So take that off because I know that's on loan to you and you're not old enough to wear that expensive of a watch. I think for a kid who's 12 years old, to own a watch such as this, it would be an honor for us to wear it, for you to wear it, and let's see if it's gonna fit your wrist. It is yours to keep and do whatever you wanna do with it, but I think that what you've done so far and what you're trying to do so far is amazing. I'm sure Ivy has mentioned that we're gonna be here every step of the way to help you. And uh, so enjoy the watch, congratulations, and uh, good podcast, I guess. Thank you very much, Roman, that was amazing. Yeah. Enjoy. Ryland, congratulations. You just got gifted a chronograph tutor by the man himself, Mr. Roman Scharf. I mean, that, how, do you, how does that feel? Tell me, how does that feel? Very happy. <laughs> Very happy. All right. Excited. I, when I was 12 years old, I didn't think about how I'm going to start a charity organization, involve other kids worldwide, and do what I do, which is BMX biking in his case, to use it for the greater good. And I'm, ta I'm completely taken back by this kid. We're gonna be following his journey. We're gonna be helping him out. I'm gonna get the video department to help him out. I'm gonna get everybody in here in marketing to help him out. So stay tuned, you're gonna see big things from this kid. I can't wait to see what this guy does in the future personally. And I hope you guys stay tuned and follow his journey just the same. Guys, this wraps up this week's Gray Market episode. Next week, it's gonna be a special one. We have a very special guest coming. Meanwhile, we started a Gray Market podcast. For those of you that said, we wanna to listen to what's going on in the world of Gray Market, so make sure to check out that YouTube channel, like, comment, share, subscribe on there, and stay tuned for more great content. See you next week.